At age 23, I made over $200,000 playing poker. Join me on this journey in real time, starting from one single $300 buy-in at 1-2 to a game in Vegas where we buy in for $50,000. Here's where we're at now. Let's go. <laughs> Wait, that's actually crazy. You run like a god. So that is my friend Yash. We have been friends since way back in the high school basketball days. Yash owes me $100. He still lives in North Carolina. I moved to Florida. He's having a hard time figuring out how to pay me over the phone, but he certainly is very quick to set up a heads up poker game remotely online, me versus him. And we're going to start off the first game for $20. Queen Jack of Spades at a real hand, unlike you. I hold no pair. <laughs> You lose. Is that ever not a draw by me? <laughs> you lose. <laughs> you lose. <laughs> wow, that's so sick. Oh, you luck box. What do you have? Oh, you're such a luck vlog. Over there. Ah, I was fucking too. You're getting too good of a price. Yes! <laughs> yes! <laughs> I don't care, but I didn't think you had aces. I thought you had like ace queen. I was like, oh, ace queen has to fold here. It's kind of like the same thing, though, because like it's either a bluff or nothing. Like, I still lose the two pairs. I wasn't even gonna bluff, and then there was the queen river. I was like, alright, like, I kind of have to bluff. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's gonna be so sick when you show down Jack Nine here. Oh, I'm out of time. Straight. <laughs> oh, I had to. That's the worst. I had the right read. What'd you have? He nine. Oh. <laughs> I had the perfect read. What do you mean? I knew. I knew you did. I knew you had some BS. <laughs> How do you find that? What is that? <laughs> it's a straight. How many big mines you have? Dude, that is such a punt by you. How many big... <laughs> I 2x the pot with a straight. Call him a king high and a punt? <laughs> okay, but can you be honest? Like, I had the right read. With what? King high? I knew you had some BS. I had a straight. Okay, I knew you were BSing. With a straight? You went... Ah, uh, no. Right, I'll give you some action. Dude, that, that's a punt by you, dude. Not until I hit a king. <laughs> Not until I hit a king. You're so, what are you doing? Why are you putting in 18 bigs with a king and a three, dude? I don't have a king and a three. I have a top pair. <laughs> what are you actually doing? <laughs> Run it back. You were playing for real, though. That's not playing for real. I won. Dude, you know, okay, but you know you're never putting in 18 bigs with king three. Like, come on. Suited, heads up, maybe. <laughs> Oh, no, you're not. Like, you can jam, but you're never calling off there. <laughs> well, however much you want. I, I, I'm playing with free play. <laughs> I vote him with free play. I think we both just played that hand like perfectly fine. Yeah. How much? Snap call? Three Good luck. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> How good do you run? What do you have?
You don't have an ace. I'm so tough. Ugh. I'm so tough. Dude, I couldn't find what hand you were value betting. Merge bet. That's what they call a merge bet. I felt like you didn't have an ace after you, um... I didn't. I was scared. And then I'm like, okay, if motherfucker has a four here, he got me. <laughs> Good call, man. How good can one fish run, dude? Fish don't run, they swim. No. Yes. Good bluff. Snap, not a thought. Just clicking. All in. Seven? Every. I mean, every, every single- Complain, time. complain, complain and you'll get there. I'll have oh two pairs. Two pairs. That's two pairs. Pair. Complain and you'll get there. You didn't complain hard enough. Just finds it. Just finds two pairs. <laughs> oh. Any queen, any jack, any nine, any king, any diamond. <laughs> Dude, you were so good. Like, how is it possible? How is it possible? Set? We're going to standard. Oh. <laughs> oh, you have a flush. You have a flush. <laughs> but that's actually crazy. You run like a god. Can't take it, bro. Yes! <laughs> yes! 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 I'm not paying that. I'm What's the total? Wait, how much is it? Well, 200 today. Last one for 100? Well, I gotta go. So, like, this is actually the last one. 400, right? Yeah. I'm good. I'm using this. Bro, I had nothing. I had nothing. I had literally nothing. I was just talking about the bluff conversion. That was like the perfect word between the bluff, too. So, I was a value betting? I think I might call. What do you have? Ace hot. Actually, I block all the draws. Wait, what do you have? Like ace, ten? ace of diamonds, jack of spades. Yeah, I thought you were better than Ace of clubs, ace of hearts, preferred. I'm ahead of that hand, yep. Dude, of course I don't hit one time. Yes! Yes! <laughs> Can you admit you ran like a god? Can you say that was a good call? Can you say that was a good call? That's a standard call. How's that standard? Eight bigs, I put in 22. No, you put in more. Did you? No. Oh, saying that, trust me. I'll be like, what's BRC, Bankroll Challenge? All right, bro, I gotta go. Thank you for contributing. Peace. We're actually headed to the bingo hall today because we're playing a tournament that has 10 flights and we are gonna be playing the last one.
Coconut Creek is having a $200, 100K guarantee tournament. And for the record, I don't think they have ever had something like this, at least since I have been living down here in South Florida, which has been about three years. So pretty exciting. Figured I would hop in, test our luck, because with this many people in the tournament, we're definitely gonna need it. And to be honest, I'm not the biggest fan of tournaments for a few reasons. But I figured tonight was probably an appropriate one to just have some fun with, especially considering Yash just gave us gave us 300 bucks. So if we get lucky in this one, I'll be sure to pay my condolences for his contribution. All right, guys, the weather's pretty poor down here, so I'm gonna hang up and I'll see you guys down the poker room. Let's go. Very first hand we get involved in, the blinds are at 1-1-1. We have king-10 of diamonds in early position. We make it 300. We see a call from the hijack in the small blind. The flop comes pretty good. The flop comes 10 high. I continue with a small C bet. In hindsight, should probably be going a little bit larger. The hijack folds, and now the small blind puts in a check raise to 1300. Well, we have top pair. He could easily have a straight draw, queen jack, maybe jack eight. If he has 7-8, we are in really bad shape. He could have clubs, a flush draw. That being said, I think with top pair, hand still a little bit too good to fold. So I toss in the call and we're off to see the queen of spades on the turn. Now, I'm surprised to see him pump the brakes in check. What I think this is indicative of is he likely turned some sort of showdown value. Maybe he had queen exit clubs and turned to queen or maybe queen jack for the straight draw that now picked up a top pair and he's pot controlling. That being said, I don't think he's gonna be folding a queen if he has one, so I check it back. The river is the five of clubs. Obviously not the best card in the world. We really don't be much of anything at this point. When I see him slide out a bet to the tune of $2,300, I just can't find too many hands that we're beating at the current moment. So I decided to let this one go. With the blinds now at 100, 200, 200, we see a under the gun limp and the plus one player raises to $1,000. The hijack calls $1,000 and we are in the cutoff with ace queen offsuit. I think our hand is probably good enough for a raise here. The player who initially raised has been pretty active, so I make it 4,000. It folds back around to the initial aggressor who decides to fold. And when action's on the hijack, he's the one that decides to make the call. So not what I expected, but we're off to see a flop. The flop comes king jack five with two spades. So pretty good board for our range. And we have a backdoor flush draw. We have a gut shot straight draw. When he decides to now lead out for $5,500, it's kind of an odd bet. I don't think he would ever be doing this with a very strong hand. So even though we don't have that much money behind, I think that likely he's just not gonna be weighted towards a super strong hand here. So I make the call. A lot of good turn cards for us, and we might just be ahead with ace high. The only problem is I only have 8,500 behind. Luckily, the turn is one of those cards. It comes the ace. So when he checks it over to me, I think we have a pretty easy decision here. I decide to go all in for 8,500, and he pretty quickly calls. Super surprised to see him flip over pocket queens. So he had a really strong hand pre-flop. Surprised he didn't just go with it, but nonetheless, we put our money in as a pretty big underdog on the flop. We got there on the turn and hopefully we can fade a 10 or the last queen on the river. And sure enough, we do. So we're gonna be winning a pretty good pot here early on in the tournament. And once again, I am not a tournament player. So this is probably a very suspect line that I took. Maybe I should just be folding flop. Now with the blinds at 200, 400, 400, I look down at one of my favorite hands in the under the gun position. 9-10 suited. I make it $1,000 and we see the cutoff in the big blind calls. We go ahead and flop the nuts, checks over to me, and on a board this dynamic, a lot of flush draws, top pairs, two pairs, even better straight draws, I decide about 2600 We only see the cutoff player call and we're off to see a turn which comes the four of diamonds. So what was already the nuts turn into 
even a stronger hand as we pick up a flush draw to go along with our nut straight. At this point, I think if he has a queen, he's not going to be folding. So I decide to bet big. I bet 8,000. And after taking for a while, he eventually folds. Blind still at 200, 400, 400. The cutoff races to 1k. I'm on the button with queen 10 of hearts. Normally I would be raising this, but this time I just decide to call. And this invites both of the blinds in as well. The flop is decent. We go ahead and flop a flush draw. Action checks to me, and with three other players in the pot, I think I would rather get there before piling money in. So this time I decide to check. The turn is a king, so we go ahead and pick up a straight draw to go along with our flush draw. It checks to me once again, and not really in the mood to bloat the pot at this point, so I decide to check it. The river, luckily we improve to a flush, and the big blind leads out for 1k. We have a pretty easy raise, I make it 4200, and he thinks for a while and calls. I flip over my hand, and we are of course good. So we're gonna be dragging in a pretty decent pot, Maybe if I played it a little bit more aggressively, I would have made more money. But hey, what are you going to do? This hand is a pivotal spot in the tournament. We are in the big blind with two sevens. The blinds are 300, 500, 500, and the button makes it 1400. I think sevens are too good to just flat here, so I make it $5,000. To my surprise, he pretty quickly goes all in for $26,300. Or chips, rather. Obviously a super frustrating spot. I think the math says that we fold here because he's putting in like 50 big blinds with pocket sevens. But in these live tournaments, there are a few dynamics to consider. This one is that this is the last hand before late registration ends. So players are more incentivized to play more aggressively because if they bust this hand, they can still rebuy and enter the tournament. But this is literally the last hand to do that with. So obviously, I understand over 50 big blinds, I feel like sevens is probably just a slam dunk fold here, even though we could have the best hand a lot of the time. But I try to get a reaction out of him. So I start talking and I tell him that I have a pretty good hand, but I think his hand's better. And then he quickly tells me that he thinks I should just fold. When he says this, as silly as it sounds, like I just don't think this is ever a super strong hand. Sure, I guess sometimes he could have pocket eights here, pocket nines here, but I don't think he's ever doing that with aces or kings. So after tanking for about three minutes, I eventually decide to call. I'm happy to see him flip over ace nine of hearts. So maybe a bit of a risky gamble, but at least we are ahead at the current moment. The flop comes out and we are still ahead, but only by a hair as he goes ahead and flops a flush draw. So now we need to fade any hearts, any ace, any nine. Luckily, the turn does that as it pairs the bottom card. Going into the river, still not feeling great about the hand because we have to fade so many cards. Praying that we don't see any red paint on the card as the dealer peels it. And it comes a blackjack. Woo! We faded the whole world on that one. Happy to put the money in as a somewhat favorite and hold on the worst flop imaginable. Let's go. Pretty card dead for a while. Until the blinds are at 400, 800, 800, we are in the big blind with ace queen. A player in early to middle position goes all in for 10,300 chips. The small blind calls for less, and I think we have a pretty easy call here. So I toss in the chips, and we're just off to see a few cards. We're up against pocket eights, and we're up against a weaker ace. So we need to hit a queen or an ace here to survive. The flop unfortunately brings no help whatsoever. The turn also brings no help, so now we still need an ace or a queen here on the river, but there is no luck as it comes a brick. So we're going to be losing a pretty big pot here. Unfortunately, we cannot improve. This next hand, we have queen 10 of clubs when the blinds are at 500, 1000, 1000. We see an early position player limp. I make it 3500. We see the small blind call and the limper folds. The flop comes ace 3-3. Three, three. She checks it over to me, and I think if I had an ace here, I would start value betting on the turn a lot of the times. And I think if I check the flop, it'll look pretty reasonable. So I check it, and we're off to see another three here on the turn. She checks it once again, so I think this is a very appropriate spot to start bluffing. So I bet small, I bet 3k, and she decides to call. 
The river is a total break and she checks it once again. At this point, I think she could very well have a small pair. So I think continuing to bluff is a good idea. I bet 7,500. Unfortunately, she snap raises me to 16,000. So she played this hand perfectly and trapped me. I think it's pretty clear she has an ace here. So I fold and she shows ace queen. So we are in pretty bad shape on all streets. Blind slot 501k 1k. We see your early position limp. I'm in late position with ace queen offsuit. I make it 3,500. We see the player on the button calls the same lady I got involved with last hand and the other players fold. Luckily in this hand, I will not have the bluff as the flop comes queen high. I continue for a bet of 5,000. There's a lot of flush draws and straight draws on the board and she pretty quickly calls. The turn isn't the best, it comes in offsuit seven. So maybe she can have a two pair such as six, seven. But I think we can get value from even more hands now. If she has like a pair plus street draw, flush draw, street draw. So I decided to bet even larger, I bet 12,500. But after thinking for a little bit, she eventually folds. Very card dead for the last two levels. Now we're at 800, 1600, 1600. But luckily it can all change and we're on the button with aces. The cutoff raises to 3,500. I make it 10,000. The small blind, who's a lady who just sat down, goes all in for 20,000. Folds back around to the cutoff, praying that he goes all in as well. He eyes my stack. He eyes his. We have about the same amount of chips. And whatever he has, he thinks that it's good enough to put all of his chips in. He jams all in, but he has me covered by a little bit. I obviously snap call with my pocket aces for around 30,000 chips. We're off to see a run out and we're up against pocket eights from the cutoff and queen 10 offsuit from the small blind. So we are in pretty good shape, especially when the flop comes ace high. So we're basically never losing this hand. The only card that we need to fade is a jack. If the small blind here hits a jack, she will now have a straight and pocket eights, they're basically dead. And even if she hits a jack, we can boat up. So let's pray that a jack doesn't come. And yep, just like that, a jack on the turn. So now we have to pray that the board pairs and unfortunately it does not. So just a brutal way to get dwindled in this hand, but luckily we still win the side pot. So we lose about 10,000 chips in this hand, but at least we're still in the tournament. The blinds creeping up to 1,000, 2,000, 2,000. We have 24,000 in our stack. The low jack raises to 4,000. We're in the small blind with king jack offsuits with 12 big blinds. I think this hand is probably good enough to go all in with. So that's what I do. Full spec round to him and he does not snap call. So praying that we are in either pretty good shape or flipping. He eventually decides to toss in the chips for the call. I table my hand and it's a fair fight up against ace 10 offsuit. Let's go to a run out. Good luck, man. Let's have a ace 10. Yeah, tell me. Ace 10, queen. I feel good about it. Yeah, my suit's coming. Oh, my yeah. gosh. Oh, no, queen. Oh, my gosh. Two gutters. Oh. And just like that, we are out of the tournament. Back to back hands, where we are huge favorites on the flop. The opponent finds a gut shot. So that's poker. But to be honest, this is just one of the few reasons why tournaments are just so demoralizing. We play for a long time and walk away with nothing to show for it. All right, guys, that was a bit frustrating, not gonna lie. We started off the tournament very hot. We hit set, straights, bunch of big hands. But towards the end of the tournament, I mean, the second half of the tournament, rather, you guys cannot see me whatsoever. Second half of the tournament, we just did not win a dang hand, despite flopping extremely strong hands. Ace is all in pre-flop, we flop top set, we just lose, turns a gutter, and then we have King Jack versus Ace 10, which is a fair fight. We flop top two, and then we lose <laughs> against a turn gutter again. I mean, it is what it is. It's part of the reasons why I don't play that much tournaments, to be honest with you. I also think I was experiencing some fatigue just because I'm not used to tournaments. Like when I play cash, you don't see this on the on the vlogs, but like I get up every hour or so and stretch my legs and like just walk around. But in the tournament, you can't do that. It's more like every two and a half hours, like every three hours, which makes 
a difference. Anyways, guys, enough rambling is what it is. Appreciate you for tuning in for vlog number three of the bankroll challenge. Thank you to Yash for funding this video. What are you gonna do? All right, guys, see you guys in the next one.